Hey guys, welcome back. This video is going to be a little different from what I've been doing. Most of my videos recently have been updates related to the 3D printed everything machine. And while I have a couple new attachments that are almost ready, this video I thought I'd try something new to kind of mix it up a bit. I've been getting some messages from backers asking me to go into a little more detail about how the machine's used. But the problem is, if the pace of my videos is too slow or the content is too boring, the algorithm punishes you and your videos won't get any views. So what I thought I'd do instead is periodically from time to time, any interesting personal projects I might be working on where I'm using the everything machine, I'd film the process and over time backers can piece it together and at least get a better idea how I personally choose to use the machine. So the maker community on YouTube has been around a while now and it's getting harder and harder to find truly original content. There's like a hundred tutorial videos for pretty much every topic you can imagine. But for my first project tonight, I think I might have something new for you guys. At least I don't think anyone's made a video about it yet. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how I use the everything machine to make metal foam. For those who don't know, what it is is basically exactly what it sounds like. Imagine a sponge made entirely from metal. It's commonly used in aerospace as an alternative to carbon fiber. It's almost as strong as the solid base metal, but it's almost entirely hollow, so significantly lighter. Plus it looks really cool, so I'd imagine even jewelry makers who follow my channel would be interested. I'm in the process of building a pulse jet powered drone, so I've been designing some of the parts to be made from aluminum foam. So let me show you how I do it, it's super easy. In case you haven't guessed yet, we're gonna start with the vacuum casting attachment. First, we're gonna 3D print the part you're looking to make. The material doesn't matter, it's just gonna be used as a master to make a mold. You're gonna start out like any typical sand casting job where you're gonna fill the bottom half with casting sand, compress it really well, lay down a generous layer of talcum powder, but unlike regular sand casting, instead of pushing your part into the sand, you're just gonna lay it on top. Then you're gonna attach the other half of the mold, fill it with sand, and compress the sand like you normally would. Now I'm gonna open up the mold to remove the 3D print. I find if you tap it a few times and turn it upside down, the part usually falls right out. Now there's different types of metal foam. The type I'm making here is called closed cell and it's made by filling the mold cavity with salt. You can customize the cell size by choosing an appropriate size salt grain. I want relatively large cells, so I'm using this Himalayan pink rock salt. But you can use whatever you want depending on what you're trying to make. When you're filling the mold, you wanna make sure to completely fill it. Actually, it's better if you slightly overfill it. You wanna try and ensure that all the salt grains are touching each other so that the metal can't flow between them and close the cells off. Um, so if there's a little pressure inside from slightly overfilling it, this helps. I know I'm calling this closed cell foam, but the cells are technically open. But because the cells are open by only like a hair, it looks and functions much more like closed cell. Now you're gonna close up the mold and cast it like you normally would. Regarding the metals you can use, I've gotten it to work with aluminum, zamic, and zinc. But I think any metal will work provided you get the metal hot enough. It needs to be heated significantly hotter than you would normally cast at. Like, spoken! And it only works with the vacuum setup. This is actually one of the reasons why I made the vacuum attachment for the everything machine. I've tried it with regular gravity casting, and it doesn't work. You need a strong vacuum to pull the metal into the tiny voids. Next, you're gonna cut the sprue off and there's gonna be a thin layer of metal on the sides of your part. So if you set up the everything machine into the lapidary machine configuration, you can just quickly face each side to open up the cells using a diamond plate or a sanding disc. After you've opened the cells, you're gonna wanna drop the part in some hot water until the trapped salt crystals are fully dissolved. If any crystals manage to get trapped inside, they're trapped by a paper thin layer of metal that can easily be broken by running a torch over your part for like a second or two, and then soak it a second time. There you have it, it's strong, it's super light. You could even cast in place threaded inserts for attaching your parts, and I think it looks really cool. I've been using this casting attachment a ton recently, but I'm thinking of making it a little bigger. My nephew collects metal spinning tops, so I figured I'd try to make one for his birthday using the everything machine. I 3D printed the base. I used the same faux wood grain texture I showed you guys in my previous video. I love this method, it looks so good. I vacuum cast all the metal parts. I used the everything machine to spin them to final size. I added some stone inlay and polished up everything on the lathe. It came out awesome. But this is pretty much the max sized part you can cast using the vacuum attachment. 
So I'd really like to make it a little bigger for some upcoming projects I have. Anyway, I think that's going to do it. I have some new attachments for the machine I'll be showing in the next video. If you're interested in printing your own Everything Machine and joining the Discord, the information can be found in the description. I go into more depth about the machine in previous videos, so you can check those out if you're curious. I think we're almost at 50,000 subs, which is absolutely nuts. I have a Kickstarter for an unrelated project I'm going to be launching in a couple weeks. It's my first Kickstarter, so I'm a little bit nervous, and having even more subs when it launches would make me feel a lot better about it. So if you wouldn't mind subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. All right, guys, as usual, see you in the next video.